Okay. Um, I'm happy to be with you again. Uh, Moshe Bloom, last year I came, when it was in Yerushalayim, I came twice. Uh, I don't know who, uh, who was there. And um, we talked about Orla and Tumot and Masot. I'm working now in Mechon Torah Be'aretz. Torah Be'aretz Institute deals with Mitzvot Atliyot Be'aretz. And the truth is, I started at the beginning to talk about the Etrog, uh, but then um, I decided to talk about, to talk about Kile Ilan grafting. Two minutes about myself. First of all, I'm with six of my kids now at home by myself, so I hope there will be no interruptions. Um, I uh, was in the Yeshiva in Yerucham, Esther Yeshiva, went to Shlichut to Poland. I was a Rosh Kollel in Warsaw, Poland, for four years. Uh, assist, I was assisting the chief rabbi there of Shudrich, and I came to Israel three years ago. I live in Petah Tikva, and I work in uh, Torah Ve'aretz Institute, uh, Mechon Torah Ve'aretz, which is now in Shave Daron, uh, close to Netivot, and I live in Petah Tikva. Uh, okay, I wanted to talk about Kilei Lan, uh, grafting. It's one of the mitzvot, I think, that people do, uh, aren't so aware of. And even people, Talmidei Chachamim, somehow it's, it's not, it's like a mitzvah that slips away, somehow I would say. And even people that have gardens, that it's very relevant for them, sometimes, most of them are, don't know exactly the details and, and the specific halachot. Uh, this shiur is, I took from our book, Hilchot uh, Aretz, Torah Ve'aretz publication, which are now, we're now translating it into English. I hope in like a year we will finish, and then we'll have everything in English, but uh, as of now, uh, it's still being translated. Questions before we start? No. Okay. Okay, just a minute, let's move this. So the famous Gemara and Sota, why did Moshe want to enter the land of Israel? This is what Moshe said, Sota 14. Many mitzvot were commanded to the Jewish people, and many of them can be fulfilled only in the land of Israel. So I will enter the land so that I can fill, fulfill all of them. I, Moshe, want to fulfill all of the mitzvot, including mitzvot at Luyot Ba'aretz. And I want to go into Eretz Israel in order to, to uh, be able to, to do all these mitzvot. We will see today that some of the mitzvot that we have Baaretz apply also in Chutz Laaretz. It's our mitzvah, Kileilan, but that uh, we'll talk at the end. Okay. The Psukim and Vaikra. Ed Chukotai Tishmoru, Ben Techalo Tarbia Kilaim, Sadhalo Tizra Kilaim, Uveged Kilaim Shatnez Doya Alealecha. Do not cross feed your livestock with other animal and species. Do not sow your field with mixed species. Do not wear a garment with a forbidden mixture of fabrics. So in Vaikra, we see here what's called Kilei Behema, Kilei Zra'in, Sade field, and Kilei Bgadim Shatnel. Interesting, we have the three types of Kilei, which one is animals, one is plants, and one is a uh, domain. How do you say domain in English? Forgot, uh, uh, whatever. Uh, uh, not living things. Uh, three kinds of kilayim. The psukim and dvarim add a bit more. Lo tizra karmecha kilayim. Ten tikda sham lea zera asher tizra utvuat akarem. Lo tacharosh b'shoru v'chamor yachdav. Lo tilbash sha'atnel tsenu ufishlin yachdav. Those shall not sow the vineyard with two kinds of seed, lest the fulliness of the seed which thou hast sown, but be fought, fall faded together with the increase of the of the vineyard. Thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass together. Thou shalt not wear a mingled stuff, wool and linen together. So first we see in Dvarim that we have kidei a kerem. And Chazal explained this is not instead of Kilei Sadeh and Vayikra, but it's another mitzvah, Kilei Akerem. 
And we have a, a further explanation of Kil'ei Bgadim Sha'atled, said that Semel of Mishlim and Wool. And the Shov Echamor cross-breeding, we see it not only to, to, to breed them together, but the Isur to plow with both of them together. So we see here basically four kinds of kilayim, but Chazal explains that we have another one. Okay, uh, le let's skip the first one. Second one, kile zraim, seed, kile akerem, interplanted with vineyards, kile behema, cross breeding animals, and kile begadim, uh, shatnez. In Machon Torah, that, of course, our specialty is the first three. Whatever connected to, is connected to the field. Kilez uh, Rain basically it's not to plant two kinds of seeds, meaning nut trees, vegetables, legumes, and uh, uh, grains close to each other. How close is different uh, question. I don't want to, to deal with it now. Kilea Kerem, you're not supposed to plant a vegetable next to a vineyard. And Kilea Ilan grafting is something is not mentioned. And Chazal explains that it's something uh, uh, that is learned from the Psukim, and still it's the right. Uh, what is Kilayim? So most Nefarshim explain Kilayim as kol and in, just like you have a uh, Na'alayim, Garbayim, Nisparayim, two together, double, a couple, uh, not only plural, but two together. So call in a mixture, enclosures of, of, uh, of two things together that are not supposed to be together. That's kilayim. That's the meaning of the word according to Muslim Farshim. A combining two things together and according to the Torah, they shouldn't be together. It's interesting that the Rashar Hirsch explains kilayim as kele, prison. When you do kilayim, the Rashar Hirsh explains, you prevent, you withhold, you stop something from growing and, and uh, uh, being natural in the world. Two things that have a, a natural contra contradiction between them, and uh, a person combines them together, and it's a negative combination. Just a second. Okay. What is the reasons for kilayim? So this, I'll just, uh, there are four basic re reasons brought from the uh, by the Rishonim. Rashi says there's no reason. We don't understand. It's a chok. It's a mitzvah that we don't understand. And that's it. That's what Rashi explains for kilayim. Rambam in Moreh Nebuchim explains it's keneged avoda zara. He says that of their Avodah Zarah we do all kinds of rituals and ceremonies connected to their Avodah Zarah. Uh, 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 and doing kilai, meaning combining two trees together, two seeds together, two animals together. And that's why the Rambam says it's forbidden for us. Um, the main explanation brought by Sefer Chinuch, by Rashba, by Ibn Ezra and others, that God wanted, this is Ravash Parashat Bereshit, that each mean, each species would be by itself. So it was created different species. When we combine species together, we, we mix things that were supposed to be separated. Uh, supposed to be distinguished, distinguished each one for itself. Uh, and, and there's supposed to be a different, and you don't mix them. Don't, don't do things that I, God, didn't want to create. Um, that's the main, main uh, explanation, different variations. Sefer Chinuch says, when we uh, create a, a third species through the skilaim, so somehow a person can think that what Hashem did is not enough. And somehow we are uh, uh, we are um, coming in the instead of God somehow in creating a third species. Um, the Ramban says 
in the fourth explanation, mixes, mixing spiritual powers, each mean down here in our world has some power up there. And by mixing, mixing them down here, it mixes uh, them uh, up, up in the spiritual uh, uh, um, the upper world. I don't have a clue what I just said, but that's what the Ramban explains. Um, I have to say that I, I don't know, I have a bad feeling. I didn't find any explanation that I really can feel, can feel, uh, can feel, feel, you know, go to sleep at night happy with. Um, but um, these are the main explanations. And uh, if there are questions, so now, if not, we'll keep on to the halakhot. Okay. Now I, I want uh, this show to talk about Kile Ilan grafting and um, see the different halachot. The Gemara in Kiddushin says as follows. Et chukotai tishmeru b'emtecha lo tarbi akilayin sadcha lo tibra akilayin. Amar Shmuel ma b'emtecha b'harbaa af sadcha b'harkava. We have your two psukim together, kilei behema and kilei sadeh. So Shmuel says here in the third line, just as the prohibition of daikato, kilei behema, means by population or crossbreeding, so is that of thy field by grafting. Meaning, Shmuel says that there's not only an isur of kilei zra'im to plant a cucumber next to a tomato, there is another isur that is not written in the Pshat of the Torah, which is grafting trees. Just like Behema, the Yisur is Kilet Behema, to, to breed two animals together. So similar, we have in fields. How do you do it similar in fields? You graft two, uh, two uh, trees together. What does this mean to graft two trees together? Uh, basically, it means you take, just a second, you take one, uh, one, uh, you take two, uh, two trees, cut them, and put them together, combine them together, and then if you do it properly, this combination succeeds. Now, there are different kinds of, of uh, grafting. It doesn't matter all the details. Uh, the, we, we, have the, we have to combine through this green here, the cambium. And basically, what do you do? You, you, you take a tree that you like its fruit. Let's say an orange. It has tasty, tasty fruit and a, a good quantity, good quality. But the tree is weak. The tree is a weak tree, meaning um, pests and soil malaise can attack it. And maybe it's not, uh, it's not adjusted to the ground. Maybe it, it needs a lot of water or other, uh, other reasons. And you graft it to a different tree that the second tree is usually a strong tree, but its fruit are not edible or edible, but not tasty. And, and that, uh, uh, that tree that goes on the bottom is, uh, is the strong tree and that can resist uh, soil malaise, pests. It's, uh, it's better connected to the ground, to, to this specific ground that you want to, to plant in. And by attaching them together, grafting them together, you get uh, the best of both. The one on the top is called a uh, rochev, and the one on the bottom is called the kana. The one on the top here, you can here on the right, you can see. You can see. You can see here on the right side. Can you see my mouse on the computer? 
Okay, here you can mamash see the two, the bulk of the trees in two different colors. This one is the rochev, and this one on the bottom is the kanaf, the rootstock. Now again, the rootstock is only like is only like um, it's like supposed to be there in order to pass the water, the mineral, the salt through and make sure no diseases pets attack the tree. It doesn't has doesn't have a, a genetic implication about the food. We'll talk about it in a second. And here as well, you see on the left side, it's a bit difficult to see this, the grafted etrog, which is not allowed halachically. And here, if you can see on the left side, you can see the, the place where it was attached, uh, grafted. Here you can see as well, a grafted tree. This is the, the place of attachment, the grafting. And here you have as well on the left, Sometimes you can have a grafted tree that you have a fruit coming from the kana as well, from the rootstock. You can do that. And then you can have a tree that you get two kinds of fruit on it. I don't know if you ever saw, but some places I saw, uh, it's called a multi tree, one tree that you can get three kinds of fruit on one tree. Three kinds of fruit, different fruit and the same tree because they grafted the tree twice. And then in each part, and even the rootstock can have shoots coming out and, uh, and, and food coming out from it. Now, why do you graft? If you take a seed of, a, I don't know, of an orange and you seed it in the ground, so it's like, uh, it's like people. The seed is like the, 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 the mother, but you have the father that gives uh, its own um, uh, impact in the, to the seed. And then you'll get different kinds of food, just like you have a father and mother, so you have different kinds of kids. If you take a, sh a shoot from the tree, so, and you plant it, so then you know that they all look the same. Just like if theoretically you can make kids from only the father, only the mother. You'll have the genetics, only for one of them. But if you graft, not only that, all the kids are the, are the same, your kids will be strong, big, and tzaddikim as well, as you see with the tzitzia. So that's, uh, that's basically why you graft. Now, tree grafting was known uh, during the second temple times. We know from the Greek and the Romans that uh, they were grafting. Uh, in the Chinese, in China, it's, uh, it's, uh, they say that even before the time of the Shoftim, uh, they knew how to graft. According to science today, in the time of the Torah, meaning Moshe Rabbeinu, the grafting was not something known in the world. Um, but still, the, the Chazal, when they tell us about, in the time of Vayichini, of course, about grafting, and they learn it from the Psukim, even though it's not written, they say it's the Oaita. Meaning, grafting, according to Halakha, is the Oaita, even though it could be that scientifically, historically, there, nobody knew how to graft in the time of, of, of Moshe Rabbeinu, but still the Halakha uh, they can, can do such a thing. They say, ah, this technique that was that the world uh, learned is as well grafted. It is as well for, uh, grafting is as well forbidden because of kilai. Questions? No questions. I always debate, is no question because everybody understands everything or nothing is understood. So uh, there are no questions. Okay. And now, what is exactly forbidden? Let's see. The Rambam says as follows. I'll read the English. Grafting a mixture of trees is included in the prohibition, do not sow your field with mixed pieces. What is implied? 
when a person graphs a tree of one species onto a tree of another species, let's say he grafted a shoot of an apple tree to an ethrog tree, or one from an ethrog tree to an apple tree, he is liable for lashes, malkot, according to scriptural law, midoraita, in any place rather than Eretz Israel or in the diaspora, also the Chusna. So if you do such a thing, if you do the actual act of grafting, you are Chayav Malkot. That's what the Rambam says, and this applies in Eretz Israel and in uh, Chutz Laaretz. At the end, maybe we'll say a few words about Chutz uh, Similarly, if a person grafts a vegetable to a tree or a tree to a vegetable, he is liable for lashes in every place, meaning even in Chutz Laaretz. Um, today, we, d we don't have grafting vegetables on a tree or a tree on a vegetable, but we do have grafting of vegetables on vegetables. Today, they graft a cucumber on pumpkin, I think, and, um, and they graft watermelon on pumpkin because of various reasons. And that's uh, probably assuming the Rabbanan to graft a vegetable on a vegetable, but that's not the main issue. We're keeping on with the Rambam. What about a goy? Can a goy do such a thing? Meaning, can ask, I ask a goy to, to graft for me my cheese? So the Rambam says, no. It is forbidden for a Jew to allow a Gentile, a goy, to graft different species of trees together for the Jew. If it's for me, <coughs> It's forbidden. Just like it's forbidden for me to ask him to, I don't know, light the, no, it's not the same. Uh, to turn on the light for me for Shabbat, it's forbidden for me to ask him or to even allow him to graft if he knows it's for me. It is permitted to sow the seeds of a produce vegetable and the seeds of a tree together. Similarly, it is, diff it is permitted to mix seeds from different species of trees and sow them together. The only prohibition against mixed species that applies to trees is the prohibition against grafting. This is a common mistake. There is no issue to plant two trees close to each other. There is no, basically, there, there is no issue to plant a vegetable next to an apple tree. The only issue for applies to trees is grafting. The, 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 the act of grafting, of combining them together. If the one next to the other, there is no issue like that. And only the, the only exception is, of course, meaning if you have a vineyard, uh, uh, a grape, so then you cannot sow next to him plant next to it a vegetable because of Kirea Kerem. But there is no problem to plant two different trees, one next to the other. The, the problem, can, uh, the issue for trees is only how Kava grafts. Okay, let's keep on. Azorea Zraim Kilai. Although he is liable for lashes, Malkot, when a person sows forbidden species together, or what we're dealing with, grafts forbidden species of trees together, the produce that grows is permitted to be eaten, even by the person who transgressed and sowed it. Meaning, if somebody grafted the, the trees together, he did an isur of, lo, uh, uh, of kilei lau, of grafting. We will see in a minute that even leaving the tree in your garden is forbidden as well. That is so kiyo, kiyo. We'll see it in a minute. Giving it water or giving it, um, helping it to grow is forbidden. But once you have fruit, the fruit are, are not forbidden. The mutar ve'achila, 
even for the avarian, the person that planted it, Be'isur, even for him it's mutar be'achila. That's the halacha, which is different, let's say, uh, from Orla. If somebody, if the, the tree is in a second, first, second, third year, the fruit are asur be'achila, and even asur be'ana'a. So this is very, very different because this is mutar be'achila. This is the reason why when you go to your grocery store and you want to buy fruit, so you ask, is there were trumot of masur taken? Yes. Is it Orla? No. Is it Neta Revai that we have to learn? No. Or if yes, they took care of it already, the cash would be Nobody asks, is this fruit Kil'ei Ilan? Was this tree grafted by Nobody asks them today. Never. If you buy today pears, Israeli pears, you should know that most Israeli pears today that are grown are grafted on quince. The pears today are grafted on quince, the Isur, 100%. The farmers who do it, it's, uh, it's forbidden. The, the workers that, that uh, give water and uh, take care of the trees, they, uh, uh, it's an Isur. But once the fruit grew and was picked, you can buy it. There's no isur of buying and eating and benefiting from a, 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 a fruit that the tree was grafted by isur. That's the reason why you never see a Hersha certificate that says, Lelo chashash tevel, Tevel, Orla, or Fushut Rot Masrot, sometimes a Lelo, Lelo Shmita, you know, Lelo Kushat Shvit, or Lelo Hashashvit, even though it's not Hashashvit, it's Kushat, it's a positive thing, but whatever, that next year, Shmita, a lot to talk about, but Lelo Kushat Shvit, and doesn't not written on it, Lelo Hashash Kilai. Why not? Because of this Rambam. Because even though the act is forbidden and maintaining the tree, Kiyum, is forbidden, the fruit is mutam. Uh, uh, now, only now I see the chat. Uh, Domain, the seder. What, uh, what you do this on an etrog? Okay, very good question. What about an etrog? So, uh, etrog amurkav is pasul for arba minim, but mutar be'achila. Meaning, in the past, that etrogim were grafted, <laughs> and even today, etrogim that are grown, not for Jews, for arba minim, but etrogim that go and grow in Italy and in other places, they graft them on other trees. Uh, usually on lemon, but not, uh, and a throw grafted on lemon, so it's forbidden, basically forbidden to graft. We'll maybe talk about it in a minute about the citrus trees because that's a bit different. But basically, two species that were grafted on each other, it's forbidden to graft, it's forbidden to plant them, it's forbidden to water them. But once you have the fruit, you can eat it. So even if you have a grafted a uh, etrog, so you can eat it. But to take it to Arba Minim, the Levush explained that you can take for something Bekdusha, for Arba Minim, something that was a uh, 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 mitzvah ba be'avera. Mitzvah ba be'avera, for dvarim Bekdusha, the Levush says, just like Arba Minim, you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't do. Now, Paul is asking in the chat, if I buy pears, I am encouraging of Gavira. So maybe it's not Mamash Asur, but still I'm helping of Gavira. 
This is a very complicated question and a very good question. When Rav, the chief rabbi of Yerushalayim came to our institute, the Mohonet Rav Naaret, um, uh, so we talked to him about uh, Gathing and we told him the situation in Israel today, a few years ago, that most tales are, uh, are, uh, are grafted they saw. So we said, okay, thank you. I'm telling my wife not to buy pears. So we had to know that Rav Shteren, Rav Arya Shteren, the Rambam says, Mutar Me'achina, the Shulchan Aruch says, Mutar, it's, 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 there's no, it doesn't say that Mehadrim shouldn't eat it. He says, yes, I know. I give kashrut for it. I won't say it's not kasher, but I don't want to machzik of ravera. I want to try and help and uh, consume only things that are 100%. And in, in Torah Ve'aretz Institute, one of our major uh, uh, um, um, everlasting work is to solve this problem, meaning to find rootstocks for pears that are kosher, halachically, but are good. Meaning, why did they start grafting pears on twins? Because they found out that once you graft it, the, 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 the yield, the fruit, you have more, of, more quantity, more quality, less uh, damage from uh, all kinds of uh, uh, um, pests and insects and soil malaise and other things. So they found out, and that's why the, they are doing it. Now, to find a rootstock that is exactly fit for the ruchem is, is, could be five to seven years. Now, we said, okay, we want to try and find a kosher one. What does it mean, a kosher one? We'll discuss in a minute, minim shonim, but I'll already say it now. A kosher one mean, means to find a rootstock of a pear, which is usually more wild, um, more um, uh, usually with food not so tasty, not so edible, but still a pear. Because we want to graft a pear on a pear. And if we will find that, so the farmers that that it's important for them, meaning religious farmers, or meaning some of the religious farmers at least, because some of them don't care so much, it's not as important for them. So uh, so to help them, to give them a kosher rootstock. Let's say pears, two years ago, we finished uh, about five years um, our research, and we found a rootstock for a pear, but Ophelia it's called, which is kosher halachically and does the job. And we have people from Ramata Golan, a few farmers that started grafting the pears, grafting them on a different kind of a pear, which is kosher halachically, and it helps the pear uh, with all the, 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 the qualities of the, of the woodstock. And that is an example of what our agronomist and rabbi do in Mechol Torah Ve'aretz to try to have less of Re'avera. It's very difficult because there's a lot of woodstock and a lot of research and a lot of it is in Isur today. I would even say that most trees today in Israel are grafted. Most trees are grafted. Some of them are grafted min bemino on the same species, that's the apples. Some and uh, but some are grafted min bshenomino, which is forbidden, which is uh, a problem. Okay, let's go back to our mekorot. Um, now, what happens if I have a grafted tree and I take a branch? From the from the rochev and plant it in the ground. Can I do it? Again, I have a grafted tree which is grafted beisu. Let's say a pear and a quince. We learned that the fruit is mutan, but the tree itself is 
It's, it's forbidden to maintain it, to have Q, to, to leave it there. Theoretically, you're supposed to uproot it. What happens if you took a branch of this pear tree that was grafted on a quince, and you plant it now in the ground? Can I do that? So the halacha, the Rambam says specifically, yes, there's no problem. It is permitted to plant a shoot from the grafted tree or plant the seeds from a vegetable that was planted together with mixed species. Meaning, it's not like a genetic problem that goes with you to next gen generations. The problem is only this tree. This tree is a soup, mukar, but it's kids. Kids can be the, the fruit that you took its seeds and planted them, or could be you took a branch from the tree and planted it in the ground, but this is mutam, mutam even to plant the tree, and it's not a uh, kilai. And that's the Rambam says specifically. Okay. Uh, I, I said it, but I meant this Shulchan Aruch. What happens? Just a minute. I did this, yes. Okay. What happens to sustain, to kiyum? Let's say I bought a grafted tree. I did not know it was grafted. But, and let's even say uh, it was planted already. I don't know. I bought a house. And when I bought a house, there were a few trees there. And I asked the owner, what are these trees? He said, yeah, this tree is, a, I don't know, a, a pear, which is grafted on a quince. It's already, it's, already, uh, it's already there. But it's only a year old. What, what should I do with it? Can I leave it there? Should I take it out? Is a problem of Baal Tashri? There's an Isur to uproot a fruitful tree. But here it's Kileiran. Can I give it water? Can I leave it there without touching it until the fruit will come with the fruit of kosher, as I said before? So let's see. The Shulchan Aruch said, it is forbidden to sustain a tree grafted in a prohibited fashion. But the fruit produced from it is permissible even to the one who transgressed and grafted the tree. It is also permissible to take a branch from a grafted tree and plant it in another location. The Mepharshim of the Shulchan Aruch explained that Mideoraita, it's a sur only to graft and to plant it in the ground. But Mideraban, it's forbidden as well to lekayem, to lekayem, to, to leave it there. And there are two kinds of lekayem. There's one lekayem to leave it in the ground, passive, and you have active kiyom, which is helping it to go to give it uh, water, minerals, uh, shading, uh, and helping it grow. So probably, uh, um, so again, planting it and uh, grafting is probably a sur mideoraita, but just kiyum is a sur, but only mideravanan. That's why you will see in Safek, maybe you can be uh, more making. We'll see it at the end. Um, that's the Shulchan Aruch says. I was just, uh, maybe I didn't explain. In the past, what they, what they did in the Roman time, they had a tree planted in the ground, they cut it, and then that tree was the rootstock, and they took a shoot from a different tree and just connected it to the, the, the bark of the tree that was in the ground. That's what they did in the past. Today, what they do in the nursery, they take already a, a branch of one uh, tree of the Rochev, a branch of the second one of the Kana, and they combine it and they sell you already a grafted, uh, a grafted tree. It can be small, it can be big, but they sell you already a grafted tree in like a small, usually a small... Uh, um, a small uh, thing with a with a with a ground in it, and then when you take it to your to your garden, you take it out from this uh, flower pot and put it in the ground. That's why today we have the harkava and the nitiya. 
grafting and planting, which in the past probably you grafted it when it was already planted. So forbidden to graft, forbidden to maintain, but allowed to be eaten. The Khatam Sofer said, just a minute, we have a problem. We learned that Kil'eilan are forbidden also in Chutznaat. Midewaita. Because Kil'eilan is learned from Kil'ei Behema, cross-breeding of animals. And Kil'ei Behema are forbidden in Israel and abroad, and Chutznaat. So the Alakha says specifically that Kilei Ilan of Asur Bechut Laret as well. I'll just say I had a question from a community rabbi in, I think, New Jersey, that they have a community with a lot of uh, private houses and people have nice gardens. And then he said, listen, I, I learned that Kilei Ilan is forbidden also in Chut Laret. Meaning, all the people in my community, nobody heard about Kilei Lan. What, what am I supposed to do? So I sent them a lot of materials to, to learn and see what's forbidden, what's not. And one of the uh, people made Kilei the Khatam Sofer. The Khatam Sofer uh, was asked, his question discusses sustaining cheese grafted by Gentiles. I was asked the following, the Khatam Sofer uh, writes, the Jewish sages who live in the country of Hagar, probably Arab countries, but not, not so, not so uh, clear. What is this? Do you the that Hagar? So perhaps this was the custom of the forefathers, who many who were many and righteous, purchased vineyards from Gentiles. These included trees the Gentiles had planted, such as almond and peach trees. Most of these were grafted, but the Jews nevertheless sustained them, meaning. The Khatam Sofer was asked, a country that for many years, Jews bought uh, uh, orchards with, uh, uh, with uh, vineyards and other trees, and many of these trees were grafted. So even though the, the grafting and planting was done by a goy, the, the sustaining them, the kiyum, is done by Jews. Isn't it forbidden? So the Khatam Sofer discusses along he has a long discussion. Uh, this matter is clearly stated in Shulchan Aruch. The prohibition of Kilei Lan applies both inside and outside the land of Israel. The end of section 7 says that the Shulchan Aruch plainly states that it's forbidden to sustain such trees. So then the Khatam Sefer has a long question, and then he tries to give a limud zchut, um, which we'll see in a second. Uh, what he wants to say, perhaps that this is what the Jewish sages who follow their forefathers custom relied on, even though the plain reading of the Shukhan Aruch does not imply that one can be lived on the matter, the uh, Chulei, and he says he shouldn't do it, but in the past that they did it, maybe he says if it's only Kiyum sustain them without Maaseh, that the Jew cannot give them water, but the Goy will do it, even though it's owned by a Jew, and Chutz Laaretz is making. That's what he says because of various reasons. Again, it doesn't say the Chakrila, but it's like a limut zchut. The Aruch HaShulchan was asked a similar question. And I'm, I'm starting from here. Several Torah giants, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines from the top. Several Torah giants have already cried out on this matter. They claim that, it, that in most countries, the vast majority of the vineyards and orchards are grafted. And almost every year they are generally grafted. Jews buy a vineyard or orchard, and since it is forbidden to sustain them, they are obligated to uproot the trees. But no one does it. So it turns out that everyone transgresses the biblical prohibition of sustaining grafted trees every day. And also, the Ucha Shukhan says in the Limud Zchut, he brings a few Rishonim that the, maybe the prohibition is only in the time, the process of the, of the two trees to becoming one. There are a few weeks or months that the, the trees, after you, after you put the one inside of the other, it takes some time until they, they, um, the, the, the two trees mamash combine, the inner parts combine. And the Aruch says, the Yisur is only on these few weeks and months. 
but afterwards, after it's combined, it's already a new tree or a third tree or whatever, and it's not, it's not a sur bekiyum. That's what Rauch HaShukhan brings as a limud schut, but most poskim say that these are limudei schut, for sure it's not lechatchila, and for sure not in Eretz Yisrael, and in Eretz Yisrael it's forbidden to be mechayen kina. Um, at the end, I'll leave 10 minutes for practical guide for people that have um, trees because it's mamash. <laughs> okay. When you say it's forbidden to graft, it's not forbidden to graft. It's forbidden to graft two species, one on the other. But if it's the same species, that's not a problem. Just like there's no issue to plant tome sherry tomatoes next to, the, next to regular tomatoes. It's the same mean species, according to halakha, tomato, but it's two zanim, two different varieties. That's okay. Same for trees. If you have one kind of apple, you graft it on a different kind of apple, that's okay. If you want to, to graft an apple on a lemon, that's forbidden. Now, usually grafting, the grafting usually happens when the trees botanically are close. Because grafting two species far away from each other, genetically, botanically, usually won't work. So usually there are some similarities between the, the two trees that you gra graft, but not always they are the same scientifically, and not always they are the same halakhically. And now we have to ask the question, how do you define a species by halakha? Meaning, everybody un understands that an apple is very different than mango. But, is or, uh, but what about uh, orange, and uh, Clementina. It's similar, very similar even. It's considered maybe the same mean. How exactly do you define a mean by halakha? Which is not the same as the botanical definition. So the Rambam says as follows. Rambam in Kilayim. There are other plants and trees which our sages did not classify as Kilayim, Although they are inherently two different species and the opposite. Why? Because according to Halakha, there are three uh, uh, criteria for having the same name leaves, fruit, and taste. Let's see. Because the leaves of one resemble the leaves of the other, or the fruit of one resembles the fruit of the other very closely. The rational is that with regard to Kilai, we follow the appearance alone, Marita Ain, only in the condition that the taste of the fruits will not be drastically different from each other. Meaning, according to Halakha, two uh, fruit trees would not be Kilai, would be the same meaning, if the leaves or the fruit is looks is similar. If the leaves look similar or the fruit looks, uh, looks sim similar, the inside fruit, that is okay. But you have to have as well that the taste is close, not drastically different. Meaning, if the leaves are similar and the taste is similar, okay. If the, leaf, if the fruit and the taste are similar, it's okay. If all three are close, of course it's okay. But if only the taste is similar, but the food and the leaves don't look similar, so that's already not the same. So this is the definition of the Rambam. Leaves, food, and taste. Now, I think I, this makes a very big problem because what exactly means the leaves resemble the leaves of each other? How close should they be? The fruit, how close should it be? The orange and the lemon, is it close? 
the inside of it, the taste is close. It's a, it's a big she'ela. And one of our, uh, uh, one of the things that Mechol HaTorah Ve'as did beginning 20 years ago was going to the Rabbanim Rashi, Rav Mordechai Eliyahu, and Rav Shapira, and Rav Yisraeli, and Mamash discussing with them each, each tree, giving them the leaf to see, the food, and giving them to taste. And then they decided which, uh, uh, what are kilayim, <coughs> kilayim, what are not kilayim, what are suffix sometimes, and uh, in, at the end, we have a list that I'll show you in a minute on our website of all the grafted trees known to us today in Israel. And a list, each one, is it grafted by Isur, grafted by Heter, or grafted uh, or Safek. And then you can check. Uh, if you go to a nursery, you can check. And I'll explain it in a minute, how, how to check it. OK. So here you see, we went to a place in Gilat. They had like 30 different kinds of citrus trees. And we were mash, went, we picked leaves, we picked fruit, and we tasted. And we, we decided, eh, not me, the big rabbis in the Machon, what, uh, what, what is kilai, what is not, what is Today in Israel, as you can see, Pears, more, uh, most, more of uh, the 90% of them today are grafted into quince. Peach, plum, loquat, uh, almond, and apricot are sometimes problematic as well. Some citrus fruit as well. And vegetables, cucumber, melon, watermelon are uh, sometimes grafted into, uh, into pumpkin. That is uh, the uh, situation today. I want to say a word about citrus uh, fruit. Just a second. All the citrus food, the family, if you think of it, etrog, limon, sweetie, pomela, eh, eh, they are all very similar. The taste is similar. The, the inside, it, it has a lot of similarities, much more than other botanic families. And the Chazonish says that all citrus food are safek mino on each other. That's what he says. So if you have a citrus grafted on another citrus, it's not, it's not, uh, uh, it's defined according to Arucha as a safek mino. That's what the Chazanish says. And if it's safek mino, so the Chazanish says, if a goy grafts and a goy plant for you, so you can sustain it, you can make it. That's what the Chazanish says. Every tree that is a safek, so grafting and planting is the oraita, so safek the oraita lechumra, but only the kayamet is the rabbanan, then we can go, we can be making. So if you have a citrus tree, which you're not sure if it was mukabi or not, so it's a safek and you can be mekayim. This is very relevant for the question I asked at the beginning, someone that came to a garden and finds a tree which is two years old and he doesn't know if it was grafted by Isur or not and there's no way to check because the owner doesn't remember he bought it from somewhere and there's no way to check then the, our psak is if it's only kiyom it's already okay because it's a fake line you don't know that it was grafted by Isur maybe but maybe not <coughs> maybe it wasn't grafted Maybe it was grafted on uh, the same mean, the same species. So according to this chazonish, uh, our psak is that you are allowed to sustain such a, a tree, to leave it in your garden. You don't have to uproot it. But if you're now going to buy a tree, then you should buy it. You should buy something lechatchila. But with the avad, you already bought and you don't know, etc. Or, you, or it's already planted by somebody else, so that you can be more making. Uh, on our website, we have a, 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 a whole article about grafting, a review about the grafting, and we have this uh, table, we can see it on the website. And Mamash, this is very practical, meaning you come to a nursery and you want an almond tree. 
you know, you see the, with this uh, aspect that this is a problematic, meaning there are some forbidden rootstocks. You see, almond and a peach. Now, what you have to do is ask the nursery, what is this fruit grafted onto? they supposed to know. And if they don't know, they can ask the, the nursery that they bought it from. Because sometimes there's one nursery that produces it, and then they sell it to a nursery that sells it to, to individuals. But it's, uh, you can check it. And sometimes it says on the tree, what, what is the woodstock? And then you can go on the list. If it's bitter almond, it's no problem, number one. Number two is okay, but not as good. Number three is only by a uh, non-Jew, meaning it's a suffix minor. And number four, if forbidden stocks is forbidden. And we wrote what, what there is, because not every tree is, is grafted on, on every woodstock. What in Israel, according to last year, I think, when, when we made it, what is what is, and then you can go to the to the to the nursery and ask. And if you don't know, you can uh, ask, send me an email and ask me. And if you really want, you can take the list to the nursery and Hebrew and English we have, and to ask this one, or this one, or this one. But just don't tell the don't ask. Is this almond on a bitter almond? Because then you will say yes, yes, yes. It's okay. Don't give him the answers. Ask, and then check in the list. And don't tell him what are the uh, permissible woodstocks because then he will sometimes he will be not honest with you. So we have a, in the website we have one table of regular fruit trees. We have for citrus trees uh, because all citrus trees are grafted, as I said. Even though all of it is, as you see, preference three only by non Jew, there's no fourth problem. But still, there are some which is lechatchila, and that's the best. Let's say uh, lemon. The best for lemon is macrophilia. Lemon and chushchash, but the orange is a safek. Is you know it's uh, safek. It's better not. It's better to buy things that are on the first column here. And now we have. This is not so relevant, but. I'd say noy, ornamental trees grafted on uh, fruit trees is forbidden as well. So if you have a tree that you buy, even if it's not a fruitful tree, if it was grafted on a fruit, fruitful tree or vice versa, then it's a so. Meaning it's forbidden to, to graft an it's it's ma'achal and it's rak, or the, the opposite. Um, so this is table number three. It's less practical. And table number four, we have uh, vegetables. Meaning, if you buy vegetables, if you buy uh, cucumbers today, so all the farmers today, when they, they buy grafted cucumber and pumpkin, for individuals, I'm not sure. Again, if it's seeds, usually people buy seeds. So seeds, of course, are not a problem. It's a seed. But if you buy little uh, uh, plants that are ready, that they could be grafted. Then if you buy watermelon, uh, tomato is not a problem because it's grafted in tomato. But watermelon, melon, eggplant, and cucumber, if you buy seeds, no problem. But if you buy little plants, you have to make sure they are not grafted because if they are grafted on something that is basal, so when you plant it in the ground, you're not very basal, kill a land. And giving it water is a soul as well. And a person should be aware of it. Uh, so I, I, I discussed it uh, before, and now we can understand a bit more. Because the Troga Murkam, as I said, first of all, it's a citrus, so it's only a suffix, you know, a trogim, the going graft on lemon and chushrash, very orange usually. And a Troga Murkam, according to all, almost all the scheme, is asur le'arbat aminim. 
because what I said before, the levush explanation of mitzvah ba be'averna, and, but still, it, it, it's mutar ve'achila, and maybe even according to the Chazanish, if it was grafted on a lemon, and a non-Jew grafted and planted it, I can, I can sustain it, I can be mekayim it. But e using it for arvaninim, it's forbidden. I have to say that some poskim said that etroga murkav is forbidden because of other reasons. They said that etroga murkav is forbidden because of it's not an etrog. Because they said, if you graft an etrog and a lemon, so the fruit is a combination of etrog and lemon. So it's not 100% etrog. It's a lemon etrog or an etrog lemon. And you, for our family, you have to take an etrog, not an etrog lemon. So many poskim gave this reason is the reason that etrog amurkav is pasul, because the fruit is not 100% etrog, it's some of it is lemon, or in different, uh, different uh, variations of this uh, uh, explanation. Uh, this is problematic because according to the, to the knowledge we have, scientific knowledge today, there is no inf genetic influence of the rootstock and the fruit. The, 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 the influence is only, is only helping the tree to, to grow. If the tree goes better, so you can have a, a fruit that is nicer, bigger quality, etc. But the genet there's no, almost no difference in the genetics. So the etrog should look, etrog amurkav, even though what Naposkin said, uh, probably they didn't exactly understand the situation. The etrog amurkav looks like etrog shelo murkav, the same, even in the inside, but usually it will be bigger and more juicy. But it doesn't have a, 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 a real genetic, a real genetic a, a, a difference. And that is something we know today that 200, 300 years ago when all the Oski wrote many chuvot of Etroga Murkav, this issue wasn't so clear. They thought that, that it has a genetic uh, influence and today we know it's not like that. And um, Etroga Murkav is a bit more complicated because uh, other issues, but uh, th that is basically it. Questions still now? Oh, I see a question in the chat. What is the status of broccolini? Broccoli and kale together in one plant, sold by Carmelin. So again, if you are consuming it, eating it, so that's not a problem, as we said. If you want to plant it, if you want, uh, if you want, uh, if you want to plant it. It's a problem. Now, I, I don't, I, I don't know what is it exactly. Maybe you can send a, a link to see what it is. If it's just a, if it's just a new kind of vegetable, which is genetically has broccoli and kale together, so that's not a problem. That's, that's, a, that's a, a genetic pollination between two species to create a third species. According to Allah, to many, to most Muslim, is not a problem. Meaning, to create a third species genetically, to take powder of, of one flower, to put it in, in, in a different flower, in order to get a third species, but you're doing it only genetically, that is not a problem, according, according to most Muslim. That's what bees do. Or uh, other uh, other insects do do uh, naturally, so you just imitate them. That's not a problem. The the problem is only the actual act of the two trees. So I don't know what exactly is this uh, borcomini. If it's a third species, which is not actual grafting, the act of grafting, that's not a problem. If it's grafted, so we said 
that according to the Shulchan Aruch, grafting vegetables on each other are asur, with the Rabbanan, but asur, vegetables and say, so uh, planting them would be problematic. Now, we, a few years ago, we found a nursery that is working with Machon Torah Ve'aretz, Marmelstein Nursery in Ganei Tal, next to Chafetz Reim, next to Kvishesh, and he has, he sells a section, he has a whole section of kasher, uh, 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 hech, uh, trees with hechsher. What does it mean trees with hechsher? We give a hechsher, we check that all the trees there are ללא חשש kilayim. You go in and you don't have to ask if it's kilayim, what is the rust of it, anything that's ללא חשש kilayim, and as well ללא חשש עולה, but that, uh, that's something else. And then it's a place you can go, you can go, you're buying a tree usually once in your life or twice. So somebody told me if I'm buying, I went to a nursery and I asked the woodstock, they didn't know, I'll check what is a, what tree, what woodstock, just a minute, maybe this, maybe that. So they didn't give him free answers. And he said, you know what, he saw the white the plant, a grafted tree. So, uh, so I recommend them go to the Tal. You know that everything there is is a is a is a little chashash kilayim, and he went there. He was very happy, and I we of course we recommend him because uh, we want him to have business because uh, because it's the only almost the only place today that we give hechshaf and kilayim. There's one more nursery in Kuchav Shachar a small nursery that sells to individuals, trees. And as, as I said, most nurseries, they said, you know, uh, you know, even religious people come and nobody asks me questions. So why should I need your hechshem? Machon HaTorah Ve'aretz. Machon HaTorah Ve'aretz, we came to a few nurseries and they told us, listen, we're having religious people with a big black, sometimes a big black keeper, and sometimes with a hat and a suit coming and buying trees, food trees, and nobody started asking us questions. And you're coming and uh, wanting us, eh, that uh, the rabbis need to check every tree, and what would stop that? We don't, uh, we don't need you, thank you. We have business even without you. And again, it's mainly because people are not aware of this. They're not aware of the issue. Uh, and uh, part of our, uh, our lectures is that people will understand this. And they, again, they can go to a regular nursery and make sure what, uh, what, uh, that it's grafted kosher. And almost everything is grafted today. Almost every tree is grafted. Um, so if it's grafted kosher or not kosher. And uh, if, if you want to have easy life, you go to Marvich and then everything there is kosher. And this, I'll, there I'll just say that in Chutz Laaretz as well, Kileilan is forbidden, as I said before. And I'll just, uh, I'll just, the last two minutes, let's see if it will. So on our website, we have uh, the list of grafted uh, tree that I showed you before, a whole list. And Mamash uh, details every tree today we know that is grafted and, and what. And uh, that's how that's how a person can be mekayim the mitzvah, not over an isur, even though he doesn't have to know by heart everything. Somebody said, I checked and found that broccoli and kale are from the same species. Again, I don't know if it's halachically the same species or only or only by the scientific, um, uh, 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 how the science um, differentiates between the species. I don't know. So if uh, whoever it's relevant, you can send me an email more uh, detailed on, the, on our website and, uh, and um, I can check it. Questions? Uh, does it ever happen in nature that one 
species can cross pollinate another in effect creating a grafted uh, plant and if so are there any issues with problems with that biologically it's not grafted it's uh it's pollinated it's two different things but no there's no problem is the science again the scientific uh, 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 how the science defines species that they can uh, that they can pollinate with each other that's yeah, but that would not be considered graft so that would not be considered grafting correct correct that is not a problem and okay. that's what the science does today all the time they're looking for better better quality food that have better in, in, in different uh, 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 so that's not a problem only the actual graph so if there were a method whereby if somebody wanted to uh, uh, combine two different uh, types of fruit or plants or whatever and if there was a method to to get them together to combine them without actually graft that would be permitted just like uh, pollination yes like but pollination that's... yeah okay got it okay. Th that's what everybody does today that's not a problem the actual grafting is a problem yes okay thank you very much okay so, next next year is shmita so uh, i think after pesach already is uh We'll talk to the people in charge, but there's a lot what they talk and Shemitah and uh, both people that have gardens and grow things in the house and out the house and consuming Shemitah, fruits and vegetables. That's a very long, there's a lot what they talk about. Uh, there's no question. Okay. Thank yeah, you very well, much. Thank you. When it comes to Shemitah, okay. we have, we have Shirim every, every time Shemitah comes around, but we forget everything after six years. And we need to learn it again. Definitely. And things change as well. Yeah. And the uh, techniques used in Israel. Every seven years, there's, uh, it's not the same as that. It's, it's last week. Okay, we're going to see you, right? Thank you, Nathan. 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 Thank you, Nathan.